Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to go through the video solutions to the parallel lines and perpendicular lines practice questions. If you want any extra help on parallel lines or perpendicular lines, if you go to corpmaths.com forward slash contents, you scroll all the way down to videos 231 and 232. They're the video tutorials on parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code and it'll bring you straight to it. Okay, let's get started. So let's look at question number one. Okay, question number one. So question number one A, we've been asked to draw a line that's parallel to the line AB. So as you can see, we've got the line AB, and a parallel line is a line that will never meet or cross the line AB. So it's going to have to be horizontal as well, so it's going to look something like that. It can obviously be a longer line, it could be a shorter line, it could be above the line, it could be below the line. As long as the line is parallel to it, so in other words, it's not going to meet the line AB, then that's fine. Okay, question B. So I'm just actually going to get rid of this and just leave one parallel line. Okay, question 1b. We've been asked to draw a line that's perpendicular to the line CD. So we've been given the line CD. Perpendicular means to cross it at right angle. So it means the angle between the line we're going to draw and this line CD needs to be a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to draw this line here. As you can see, it crosses the line at 90 degrees. It's a 90 degree angle between the line that I've drawn and the line CD. So this line and the line CD are perpendicular. They meet or they cross at 90 degrees. Okay, question two. So question two, A, B, C, D is a trapezium. So we've got this trapezium. So it's a quadrilateral, it's a four-sided shape with one pair of parallel lines. And we've been given some options. We've been given the words obtuse, perpendicular, acute, parallel, and reflex. And we've got to complete the sentences. So we've got to fill in the spaces using the words below. So A, the line A, B, so A, B, is something to AD. So we've got AB and AD. So as you can see, the line AB, this line, and the line AD, this line, they meet at 90 degrees. That means they are perpendicular. So let's write that down, perpendicular. So the line AB and AD are perpendicular. They meet at 90 degrees. Our next sentence, DC is something to AB. So DC is this line. A, B is this line. They are the two parallel lines. Remember, trapezium has one pair of parallel lines. So that means that D, C and A, B are parallel. And finally, part C, angle Y is an something angle. So if we have a look at angle Y, it's not an acute angle because acute angles are less than 90 degrees. They're smaller than right angles. It's going to be an obtuse angle because it's bigger than a 90 degree angle, but it's less than a straight line. So it's going to be obtuse. So angle Y, this angle, is an obtuse angle. And that's it. Okay, question number three. So question number three, we've been given this shape. This is the shape a, B, C, D, E. So it is going to be, so part A says, what is the mathematical name given to the shape A, B, C, D, E? So it is a pentagon because it's got five straight sides. One, two, three, four, five. It's a pentagon. Part B. Part B says, which line is parallel to ED? So if we have a look at our pentagon, we've got ED here. The line that's going to be parallel, so the line which is going in the same direction as ED would be BC. So that is going to be BC. Next question, question C, which line is perpendicular to ED? So in other words, it meets or crosses it at 90 degrees. So if we go up and have a look at the line ED, this line, the line CD perpendicular to it because there's a 90 degree angle between the line ED and CD. So CD or DC, whichever one we want to call it. I'm going to call it DC. Okay, our next question. Okay, question number four. Question number four says, shown below is the shape A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And it says, what's the mathematical name given to the shape? So let's have a look. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight sides. So it's a heptagon. And part B. Part B says, mark with the letter X an acute angle. So an acute angle is going to be an angle that's less than 90 degrees. So this is a right angle. It can't be that one. That's obtuse. It's bigger than 90 degrees. This angle up here is an acute angle. So let's call that X. This angle is actually a reflex angle. It's bigger than a straight line. This angle is an obtuse angle. It's bigger than a right angle. This angle is an obtuse angle. It's bigger than a right angle. And so is this one. So the only angle that I can mark in here is the angle at the point D. This angle C D E. This angle. So I've marked in an angle and I've labeled it X. Part C says mark in an obtuse angle and call it Y. So we're looking for an obtuse angle. So that's one that's bigger than 90 degrees but less than a straight line. So I could call this angle 
Why? Because it's bigger than 90 degrees, but it's less than a straight line. Alternatively, I could call this one Y or this one Y. Not this one, that's a reflex angle. I could call this one Y. So any of those four angles. Then the question we're only asked to actually label in one of those angles Y. So I'm going to just leave the one at the bottom there. But you could have that one, that one, or that one, or that one. Okay, next question. Part D. Part D says, mark with the letter Z a reflex angle. So let's go back up and find our reflex angle. Well, we've talked about it already. This angle here is a reflex angle. It is bigger than a straight line. Uh, so that's going to be our reflex angle. So let's call that Z. Okay, next part, question E. Which line is parallel to AG? So if we have a look, we've got AG, and it's actually been marked with an arrow, and another line with an arrow is this line, DE. So they are parallel. Those little arrows show that they are parallel lines. They're going in the same direction, and they'll never meet or cross each other. So DE. And part F says, which line is perpendicular to EF? So perpendicular to EF means it'll either meet or cross at 90 degrees. So EF. So EF is this line. We've got the right angle here, so that means that EF and FG will be perpendicular, or you could call it GF. But this line, FG or GF, they, they are perpendicular, EF and that one, because you've got this right angle that's marked in. So FG or GF. Okay, that's it. Let's have a look at our next question. Question number five. So question number five, it says the lines AB and CD are shown on the grid. So we've got AB and CD, and they are parallel lines, so they're going in the same direction, and they'll never meet each other, so they are parallel to each other. And the question says, the word, which word below describes the line A, B, and C, D? Well, they are parallel. Next question. So part B says, draw a line that is perpendicular to the line C, D. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. So one way we can do it is get the line C, D. Now we want to draw a line that's perpendicular, so that means that it's going to meet it or cross it at 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cross of the protractor here on a point on the line. And I've chosen this point here, which is the point negative 3, negative 1. And I'm going to start at 0, so here. And I'm going to go around to 90 degrees, and that brings me to this point here. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of my protractor, so I'm just going to remove it. And I'm going to get a ruler and I'm going to draw a line going straight through those two points. So through the point where we put the cross of the protractor here and, and the point which was at 90 degrees. So it would look something like this. So that line is a line that is perpendicular to CD because it meets it at 90 degrees. So that's one way you could draw a perpendicular line to the line CD. So that's one way we could draw a perpendicular line to the line CD. Another way you can do it is actually by looking at the line CD. So if we look at the line CD, we're going across 2, down 1, across 2, down 1, across 2, down 1. So if we go to a point on the line, and instead of going across 2, down 1, we go across 1, up 2, across 1, up 2, then that should be perpendicular. So let's have a look. So if we had this point here, let's choose this point here. If we go across 1, up 2, cross one up two that line will be perpendicular to the line cd so if we draw a line going through those points as you can see that line is perpendicular to the line cd as well so two ways you can draw a perpendicular line to the line cd are one get your protractor put a point on the line put the cross of the protractor on that point and then go to zero and go around to 90 degrees and get a line that's 90 degrees or another one is to find the line and figure out how many go across and down or across and up and then so instead of going across two down one we're going to go across one up two across one up two okay let's have a look at our next question Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number six. So in question number six, we've been given this line AB, and we've been asked to draw a line that's perpendicular to the line AB. So we've got the line AB, and we want to draw a line that's perpendicular, so a line that's going to cross it or meet it at 90 degrees. So let's choose a point on the line. We could choose any point. I'm going to choose this point here. And then get your protractor, and we're going to move our protractor over to that point, and we're going to put the cross in the, at the bottom of the center of the protractor, there on top of the cross and then what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at our protractor and as i can see here zero is on the outside so we're going to go around to 90 degrees 10 20 30 40 all the way around to 90 here and then that means that if we draw a line going through those two the cross and the point here if we draw a line going through those that will be perpendicular to the line a b so let's get rid of our protractor and let's draw our line and that's it. And then let's just mark in our right angle, our 90 degree angle, and that's it. So this line is right angles or perpendicular to the line AB. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number seven. So question number seven says, Lee has been asked to add symbols to the lines AB and CD to show that they are parallel. 
His answer is shown below. So we've got the line A, B and C, D, and he's put these little dashes in. So whenever we look at isosceles triangles, we often have two little dashes on the isosceles triangle. And those little dashes show that those lines are the same length. So he's actually used those dashes to say that A, B and C, D are the same length. Well, he's meant to say that they're parallel to each other. So those symbols are the wrong symbols. He should be using arrows. Arrows would show that the lines A, B and C, D are parallel. So I've just said Lee should have used arrows, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number eight. So question number eight, we've, we've got a shape here on a grid, A, B, C, D, E, F, and because it's got six letters, I think it's going to be a hexagon. Let's have a look. So one, two, three, four, five, six sides. What's the mathematical name given to the shape A, B, C, D, E, F? Well, it's a hexagon. Part B says, write down the side of the polygon that is parallel to A, F. So AF's here, the line that is parallel to AF would be CD, they are parallel. And part C says, write down the side of the polygon that is perpendicular to CD. So if we have a look at CD, we want to write down the line that is perpendicular to CD. So that means it either meets it or crosses it at 90 degrees. Well, that could be BC, or it could be ED, or DE, whichever one way we want to call it. So let's write that down, BC. I could have written down ED. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number nine. Question number nine says, David has been asked to draw a line that's perpendicular to the line EF. So we've got the line EF. So this line GH must have been the line that David has drawn. And his answer is shown below. So this is the line that David has drawn. And it says, is he correct? Well, you can see clearly here that this these two lines don't mean to 90 degrees. They should cross at 90 degrees if they're perpendicular. This is clearly an obtuse angle, this angle in here. And this is clearly an acute angle. So he's, he's incorrect. So the question says, is he correct? Explain your answer. So I've written, no, the two lines would need to cross at 90 degrees. They do not. As you can see here, we've got the lines G, H, and E, F, and they don't cross at 90 degrees because this angle that I've shown is greater than 90 degrees. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the parallel lines and perpendicular lines practice questions on corporate maths. I really, really hope you found this useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you need any extra help on parallel lines or perpendicular lines, if you go to videos 231 or 232 on corporate maths there'll be video tutorials on parallel lines and perpendicular lines which should hopefully be useful so thanks very much i really hope you find this video useful cheers thanks bye